So I just want to sit here in the rain with you while I've got some time to kill and go f deeper into a post that I just recently made. You can get the audio version. It's like four minutes um, of a certain opinion that I've held for some time, or at least a consideration. Call it a consideration that needs to be made. Um, and so you can go check that out. If you go and check me out, you can listen to all my podcasts on Podbean or iTunes and so I just posted it there as well as on my social media and what it is is it's just a response to the people that I think are going tumbling down the rabbit hole of conspiracy theory investigation on the internet uh, and just buying into every single thing hook line and sinker simply because we all now know that there are legitimate conspiracies at foot in the world and uh, this whole thing goes much deeper and darker and much bigger than I think a lot of us maybe originally imagined. And so as we wake up to the factual conspiracies, we can be very easily distracted by either misguided interpretations of facts that lead to what we call conspiracy theory, or it could be actual intentional psychological operations that could be put out to just muddy the water, keep everybody confused, get us arguing about semantics and causing more division than would be desired if we are to truly have a chance at actually exposing the true corruption that exists in government, in these institutions, in the pharmaceutical world, and wherever else we're going to find it. Uh, to me, this is beyond debate anymore. There's definitely evil at work in the world and corruption and criminality. And the reason is very simple that this is part of human history. This is an aspect of the dark side of our shadow and human consciousness. And so wherever you find humans, eventually you're going to start to find manipulation, secrets, intrigue, criminality, corruption, conspiracy, collusion between different criminal types, etc. And I've spoken about it before in previous podcasts that there's this whole concept of an inner conspiracy that we eventually commit against ourselves to avoid the process of fully looking in and dealing with our own inner shadows, fears, you know, etc., and addressing our flawed belief systems. Basically, our resistance to looking in the mirror um, is, is what I term the inner conspiracy that can go viral, it can go externalized, it can become projected outwards. And then these are the types that will start to engage in actual conspiracy in the world in to gain power to hold power to abuse others or whatever it is to steal instead of to earn the corruption of the human being is impossible to deny so then anybody that's completely denying conspiracy you've lost your rocker and this is the issue however um we have this other problem where we can overcorrect, right we can go too far it's the very definition of extremism is to take a truth, but then bring it way too far to the point where it is no longer the truth. And so this is where I'm just trying to be a voice of balance and just say, hey, you might not even agree with my assessment as to what the real conspiracies are versus the fake ones or the false ones. Um, but it doesn't really matter because the whole exercise that I'm trying to help you with in terms of just your thinking is... How can you tell the difference, really? Are there markers? Are there certain hints that we can look at to see if there's a pattern that we can see as to whether or not something is false or not, especially in this regard? You know, because you got to remember that researching these kind of things, we don't necessarily have all the evidence because criminals tend to try to hide and conceal evidence. So we just have pieces of things in many cases. In other cases, it's just totally demonstrable fact. Um, you know, I'm not going to go through all the details in this show. I've done that in the past. It's, it's the pinnacle of my work. Um, you know, people call me a conspiracy theorist, but I don't like to be associated with that bunch um, of people who just buy everything because it's got a shiny covering on it. And, and it just seems to make logical sense to them based on the information they have and based on the condition of their mind at that time. Uh, but I would rather say, no, I'm a conspiracy researcher trying to validate which ones are real and which ones are not. And we should all have that investigative 
detective cap on when we look at any of this stuff. We shouldn't just jump to conclusions every time we see something that just encourages our original discovery that yes, there's evil in the world, there's cr criminals happening everywhere, crime happening everywhere from the lowest strata of society right up to the high tables and the elites. Of course, of course, come on, wherever you find humans, you're going to find a mixed bag of tricks, okay? But then we can start to say, well, we're getting confirmation bias by because you get so much flack for talking about any level of conspiracy, right? Any level of corruption going on in the media or the big institutions or any of these kinds of things that we talk about on this show, you're going to be immediately laughed at and assaulted by all your normie friends and the whole society and culture in the pop culture because they're operating on a very low IQ observational level of this. They don't really take any time to really investigate it themselves. And it's much more comforting for them to just take the word of the media in the same way that it's very comforting for, you know, the average religious person to just take the comforting dogma told to them by priests about what their holy texts say. You know, we've been talking about that as well and how that can also be used as a device for manipulation. And the way that this formula works is it must be based and seeded with lots of truth. The more truth, the better. The best lies, the best criminal conspiracies are actually mostly committed by people who are unknowingly involved in something that's very dark and nefarious or illegal or whatever. What tends to happen in the extremist camp that think everything and everybody's in on it, it's the whole, it's the biggest thing ever, these conspiracies are blown up into these big cartoon character level of things. And they are, they've gone, they've continued getting all that abuse from their fellows on probably legitimate conspiracies. And then because they see all of these memes flying around on the internet that seem to confirm the greater mystery that they're trying to expose, it's confirmation bias. So they go, yeah, oh, well, because there was a lie over here, then that must also be a lie. And then, oh, because of this lie? Well, that was also a lie. Well, that means every single thing ever is a conspiracy. There could be something there where, you know, your people are noticing a trend in what they're told versus what they're experiencing. They see the chorus. Uh, collectivized nature of the media in terms of we're not seeing all this independent journalism in the mainstream media. We're seeing a bunch of puppets reading teleprompters telling you the same script, not questioning it, and actually dis attacking anybody that does question it, which isn't real investigation. It isn't real journalism. And, you know, we saw it with the pharmaceutical industry, the medical industry, who claims to be standing on the pillars of the scientific method. Yet we have plenty of scientists that are critiquing, say, what the World Health Organization told the world and what the CDC told the world and these government agencies or these pharmaceutical companies like Pfizer and <clears throat> AstraZeneca who told the public one thing, everybody repeated it, everybody called it science because it came from scientific authorities, yet they ignored all the actual scientists who were saying, wait a minute, there's something wrong here. No, we, we can't really trust it fully because there is this business relationship uh, that is a conflict of interest in the pharmaceutical world with these medical journals. So we got to deal with that before we just blindly start calling it the holy scriptures, right? That we just don't ever question. So I'm just giving you some examples off the top of my head. Uh, there's many, many more. And, and so people see that, they experience it, and then they go, holy shit, it's a logical thing. I've said it myself many times. Average person stumbling along in life, just given getting all the handrails handed to them that society gives them no questions oh we can trust everybody the government would never lie the media would never lie these international corporations who have consolidated themselves into their positions for decades would never lie uh, these pharmaceutical companies who've all been caught numerous times committing fraud bribery uh, even murder um, you know and all uh, experimentation illegal activities galore uh, putting out drugs that they knew were going to hurt people and then they hurt people and then people sued them and then they had to admit it in court and then pay out millions and billions of fines and then nobody really gets stays up to date on that stuff so then when Pfizer comes out and goes we're going to save the day and you know everybody just jumps on that bandwagon and then now it's like oh damn why does everybody in the world have heart problems now so you know it's just stuff like this that get people going well what else are they lying about and in comes the whole Rolodex of what I call the Looney Tunes conspiracy movement. 
which is made up of people who are either misguided or are actually dis and they might be be genuine in many cases where they're presenting information that they came across that can it sounds convincing and they took it and they went hey this is it and and out of a virtue they were trying to spread the word and go well yeah here's the real conspiracy right it could be that it could also be actually pay actual paid agents out there spreading disinformation so that it can make everybody that's exposing any real level of conspiracy or criminality or manipulation going on look like they are looney tunes so it's guilt by association and then the media has a device by which they can attack true truth tellers that are trying to expose actual frauds and actual conspiracies so this is the spirit that i'm coming at it from and i find it very interesting that as a movement which i hesitate to call it but it is that you know it is a new surge of since you know, maybe the last couple decades really we had this explosion in citizen journalism and people investigating these things that are demonstrable conspiracies and um, that movement has become primed to adopt everything that's handed to them that sounds juicy seems to connect to all the other dots they're connecting and I think people can easily go tumbling out of orbit with it, you know. So I've been doing some debate. So sometimes I'll do this. I'm just curious. I'll even, I don't even know sometimes for sure, for sure, what's true and what's not. Like not all of us have the ability to be like experts in all these areas and to know the insides and outs of everything, which is why I choose to remain humble in my own personal search for this. And I keep an open mind. But you got to also keep an open mind without your brain falling out and you just becoming victim to psychological attacks and psychological warfare. And so this was the story I was telling in this short little post. And, you know, aside from getting into specifics here right now, all I would say is when I was learning about the different patterns I noticed when I was studying cults. This opened my eyes to so many things, right? And especially the other thing that I've said many times, which is that you can't learn about how a cult operates, why it's effective, why it's appealing, and how it goes so bad over and over again. You can't just learn that by studying the cult leaders, the people that are the, these charismatic leaders that start these cults. Um, everybody focuses on that, and it does need focus, but it's not the end of the story. For me, the curiosity was more so, well, what about the adherence to the cults? What about the followers? You know, the people that buy into it. What about them? And what can we learn from maybe taking our focus always on the leader? But in fact, look at the reflection of the leader, which is the following. And look at them, look at their profile, look how they behave when you challenge their dogma. Um, so... When I see that kind of behavior that I got really keen on noticing, I also had a sensitivity growing up in a very fundamentalist religious house where we went from one church and denomination to another. And I literally watched this mechanism take place in the audience over and over and over again. And I, I just, it, it's what made me start questioning all of that and doing the research that I've done on comparative religion and mythology. And I know that triggers some people because... Uh, but that's, you know, neither here nor there that everybody must go on their own individual journey with all these questions, right? I'm just telling you where I'm at. And I gained, I gained a lot of insight there. And then I kept going. And in my later years, I started looking at the actual cults, right? Ancient cults, modern cults, and comparing it all, noticing the pattern. And it was fresh in my mind when the pandemic hit. So I started noticing, again, same patterns, right? in the way they were rolling this whole new way of doing things out and how easily everybody bought into the COVID cult. And that's what I think it was. Uh, it, it got turned into that. And then I started to notice it. I was focusing on it for in terms of how they're brainwashing the normies through the media and social media and the algorithms and everything and guiding everybody's opinions by just funneling certain information across their news feeds over and over again. And you know, the first eight pages of Google and the whole story about how they frame things so that you go, oh yeah, I looked into it and then, uh, uh, right? And I got focused on that. And in the background, I started to notice that from our own side here, from the sort of alternative citizen journalist, freedom, truth movement 
it's a lot of terms there, but it's been called many things. Uh, we started to see a lot of the same patterns taking place with favorite pet theories going around in this side of the aisle, right? And I'm like, hmm. So if you're to zoom out of all of it and not call yourself anything, and, and just this is a very useful tool, okay? Zoom out of it all and start fresh with a blank slate. Look at it from a different angle. Just go, forget it. Pretend I don't know anything. Zoom out, look at it again. And if you do this regularly, not only is this going to help you refine how you acquire knowledge and how you can determine what the truth is and how you can develop the critical eye you need as well as the intuitive faculty to be able to spot what the truth is and who's lying and who's not. But it get, it's going to give you a bigger perspective of what is really going on. Even though we can't always just go, I know for sure, for sure, right? We can get a, we can get closer. So when I started doing that with all these theories, people were emailing me and messaging me and um, going and attacking other good researchers who just weren't agreeing with that and then lump it in sand. And then because the, that researcher didn't agree with that particular theory that's going around the popular trend, whatever it is, suddenly that theory is not, that person is now accused of being a shill or an Illuminati agent or a CIA agent or whatever, everything you can imagine and being attacked, even though they did good work, some of them I knew personally, and I just saw them getting attacked for simply not jumping on some new bandwagon about whatever the shape of the earth or the virus debate or uh, where the Jews run the world or whatever, pick your, pick your thing. Right. And then I started noticing it myself that when I would even write posts or do content, I'm probably going to get it for this, but Hey, whatever, uh, that you challenge it or question it. Even, even some of it, I might've come out really hard on it. And some of it, I might've been, I don't know, but it's kind of weird how everybody keeps reacting like this and showing all the exact same psychological trends that I was noticing in these cults and in these totalitarian societies and in these, you know, normie groups or whatever, brainwashed media by the media type people. I started noticing that. And now I'm seeing it in our own movement that's supposed to be standing against that. And it's supposed to be for free thought. And here we're trying to think things through and we're not going to censor each other. We're not. But then it quickly turned into exactly the opposite of that, which is why I personally have divorced myself from being associated with any specific camp, group, theory or idea. I am purely an individual at this point. I'm not affiliated with any groups I'm not affiliated with any, you know, think tanks or uh, teams or anything like that. Um, I am just very much trying to shed every part of that and just say, no, this is just me. This is my take. Take it or leave it. I don't really give a shit, right? Like, because I had to insulate myself because of how bad I think it's gotten. And that's just my honest opinion of doing this for 20 plus years. And... Um, so, so what I started to see was a good way of getting an idea about what could be loaded with lies, falsehoods, maybe even purposeful disinformation for psychological purposes, psychological operation purposes, is don't study the theory necessarily. Oh, definitely study the theory just for your own research, but don't, don't get too distracted by it. Don't get too distracted by the people who are putting it out. Look at the followers and how they behave and take notes. Do, a, do your own, do yourself a favor and get into human psychology, mass psychology, and get that pattern recognition in place so that you can basically do your own social studies experiment with this and use that as a gauge to decide whether something has merit or something doesn't. Because when you understand that it's always been, always been as a pattern in general when applied to the majority of a society or the majority of the human race throughout history. The vast majority of people do not think critically. They do not do proper investigation or nor are they trained or even have the curiosity or desire to do that because of the implications psychologically and emotionally and spiritually. The implications of being honest with what you're seeing externally around you means you must therefore be honest with what's really going on inside of you. And not a lot of people enjoy that dark, you know, dark night of the soul type approach to anything. So that's why there's all those powerful memes out there that are very true that talk about how 
you know, you've got, it's like they're sitting in a mall and there's two kiosks and one kiosk is basically selling you comfortable lies and the other one is uncomfortable truths and guess which one people line up to. I mean, the whole pandemic alone is proof of everything I'm saying. That's why I highlighted it in my Cult of the Medic series. It was a curse to the world, but it was a gift in terms of being able to reveal this because it's just blatantly right there that everybody, including the top, from the top intellectuals right down to, you know, the, uh, every strata, right? A lot of people went in on it. And it is interesting that the people that did resist the most, you had these small voices coming in from the intelligentsia, right? Or coming out from the intelligentsia, but you, you mostly had it from like blue collar people, truckers, farmers, everyday Joes and, you know, Susans, right? Who came out and were like, wait a minute, this doesn't feel right. And it turns out they were correct in their intuitive assumption, right? In many regards. Now that that lit those people up, that they have been, they have been vindicated. You know, there it is. They were on to something. They were right to question what the government was telling them, what the media was telling them, and what these big pharmaceutically pharmaceutical sponsored government agencies are telling them. But then it kept going far. It kept going, and now pff, my survey isn't looking good when I go and look at where people are at now because I think the stress of not only what we all went through over the past four years, but the fighting with the families and the, and it's just, and, and just the doubt that people have of like rethinking everything, which can be healthy. It's a healthy thing to go, wait a minute. Yeah, I have been lied to. I better go reinvestigate everything again. That's a healthy journey. Okay. But don't think for one second that just because you're going to clean the slate and try to zoom out, like I said, and come back and look at it again, that you're always going to get it right. Especially when you have expert manipulators in this world that are employed by the powers that shouldn't be in the intelligence agencies, in the fact that we have foreign adversaries that are trying to infiltrate West, the Western world right now and take it over from within. They know exactly what they're doing and they have the manuals for human psychology and mass psychology sitting on their desk at all times, which means You've got to question everything coming from the mainstream and the alternative. And I know nobody wants to do that. They want simple explanations for complex issues. They want comforting certainties as opposed to uncomfortable uncertainties. And even though if the uncomfortable uncertainties might actually be a closer pathway to the actual truth, the comforting certainties are what are blocking them from the truth. That's, that's what I'm noticing. And, and I can tell by the resistance that's get, that you get from just even suggesting another alternative view on a particular conspiracy theory that's floating around and getting lots of views. And you go, wait a minute, um, this is, there's a few red flags here. First of all, it doesn't have any real evidence behind it. It's simply giving you null hypothesis. That is a big sign right there. That right there, you can start there and go, hmm. So we're not going to give an alternative hypothesis that actually has better evidence than the current hypothesis on a certain thing. We're just going to say, no, that's not true. And we don't have any evidence to really show an alternative that explains it better. This to me is a good indication. Um, the other thing is, is, is the reaction, the way people react to uh, any challenge of the dogma or the, or the narrative or the theory, right? And instead of having an open-minded approach that says, okay, yeah, that could, could be that as well. Oh, it could also be that. Oh, it could be like, say you notice something and you go, yeah, there's something, there's something wrong. I can't pin it down. I don't know for sure. I'm not the one sitting behind the closed doors in, in these secret meetings that are creating the agenda for the world or whatever. I'm not there. I'm not part of it. I'm just looking from the outside in and picking up little signals and then formulating theories. That's what we're all doing. Right. And so in that, if you're going to be honest, you're always going to be like, yeah, this is a, I, all the indicators seem to be going over here. Right. But the indicators go that way when you're only viewing things like this. 
You take one blinder off, suddenly new things come in. You take both blinders off and suddenly you're in a whole different tangled, complicated mess that you have to sort through before you can properly not even conclude on the matter, but just try to get closer to your hypothesis of what's going on. So what I'm saying is the scientific method has been lost from this. The detective method has been lost in many regards. And that is frightening to me because it now creates a bunch of cartoon characters, like I was saying, for the real conspirators to point at and laugh and then get the normies and the people they're using against you to block the true truth from coming out. And they get to put you into that basket. And then we don't have any progress. So that could be the motivation for doing spoiling the pot of real research and good research with a bunch of nonsense that's to lead you astray. That's really just exaggerating the truth. And back to this point I was making about how the way I see it, when I look at the sort of mindset of these psychopaths and these power hungry control freaks over time, they're smart enough to know that if they're going to blend in with the vast majority of human society that they're trying to infiltrate and control, you know, or to steal resources or to take power or whatever the motivation might be, like what motivates a criminal, what motivates a serial killer, what motivates a genocidal maniac, what motivates a tyrant? Like uh, that's a different podcast. Let's just accept that those things are factually part of the human experience on this planet have been since history up to the present and it hasn't gone away. So we, we know that that's possible. Our challenge would be to show that it's actually happening now, right? But regardless, those people know that they have to be chameleons. They have to blend in. They have to attract human consciousness to the lie. But if they give a pure lie, if they give a big lie, nobody will buy it. Because I believe human consciousness is actually oriented towards the truth in terms of just that we know intuitively as human beings, the truth on every level is what facilitates our survival in this life and in this world. If you're lying to yourself about the nature of your reality and the dangers that are afoot around you, then you are going to be victimized by your ignorance of those factors, right? So they're not going to come out dressed in a red cape with devil horns and say, I am evil and here's my evil agenda and here we go. Like, like the way a lot of these conspiracy deniers maybe think that that's how it would be. And then on the extreme end of the, of the radical conspiracy theorist who thinks everything is a conspiracy and everybody's in on it, they're also not understanding that principle. That the, the real way to hoodwink the world or to hoodwink a society that you want to infiltrate and take power in is to give the vast majority of your rhetoric your narrative and the information you want to put out there give them as much truth as you can stand as long as it doesn't completely thwart your real agenda because of the fact that you need public support if you're going to be a minority group that has an ulterior agenda that isn't best for the people that you're trying to convince just think of charlatans think of these how many charlatans and these freaky cult leaders and tyrants we've seen in history there's so many examples right how do they operate they operate like chameleons so they'll say a lot of very true things they'll lace it top to bottom with a lot of true things that's how they get to people that's how they hook you it's the conclusion or the basic premise underneath it that is the lie it's little darts of lies that are what where the poison is located Right. So this makes our job infinitely more complicated. And as Oscar Wilde brilliantly said to sort of sum it up. The truth is rarely pure and never simple. And I think there's this notion in a lot of people's heads that they think that simplicity means truth. Not when you're dealing with these kind of psychopathic types that I'm talking, not when you're dealing with human psychology. In no way, shape, or form is human psychology simple, okay? In no way, shape, or form would a multi-layered agenda to hijack a government, a country, your banks, your wealth, 
Think of any criminal racket. What the mafia does, the gangs, the human trafficking, whatever. Just pick your poison of evil that happens on this planet on a daily basis. None of that would be able to operate if it was just out in the light of day and it was so obvious and it was this massive, gigantic lie. They don't sell you that. They sell you a lot of truth. They have to or it won't work. So this is why when I see these types of conspiracy theories out there that require millions of people, thousands and hundreds of thousands of people throughout time being involved with this pure lie that adds up to being like, yeah, the whole thing is just the, it's the Truman show. It's real. It's a documentary. And these people don't understand metaphor or whatever. Right. And they interpret everything as being a lie, everything. Um, I feel like it's just too big for it to be realistic enough. It's actually just not the way these criminals operate. It's not their modus operandi. Their modus operandi is that they'll give the vast majority of truth to contain the lie. It's the best package deal. So extreme theories, watch for them. And watch for the way that people react when you even question it, when you challenge it, when you go, wait a minute, well, this would be the counter argument. So how do you deal with that? Like a lot of times when I'm debating you guys in the chat, that's what I'm doing. And I'm taking notes on your responses because I'm trying to figure out where everybody's coming from. I hope you're taking notes on mine. This is how it has to be. Look at the reaction. Is there an emotional reaction to it? Because if there's an emotional reaction to it or a hyper sort of compensatory defense mechanism to it, there's some indications there that you should question that, right? Because that's how religious zealots react. That's how cult members react when you challenge their dogma. They don't react with rational evidence and calm discussion and everything else. And I'm not saying we can't be emotional. We're emotional creatures. I get emotional. I'm not perfect with it. But I'm talking when you see the patterns, when you see the big trends, it's a good way to get an idea of what we're dealing with here, which is we're dealing with layers and layers of conscious of psychology. Um, we're dealing with traumatized human beings. We've all experienced our own traumas. And we know that there's this sort of escape mechanism from reality that human consciousness can drift into as a way of avoiding feeling pain and trauma. So we overcompensate. And that's the issue. That's what we got to watch for when we're going down all these rabbit holes. So I, I definitely have my, my ideas and my theories about which conspiracy theories are COINTELPRO or just generated from the wrong place or, you know, just, it's a, it's an overly, it's a, what do you call it? An exaggerated manipulated version of the truth. It's not the full truth. You know what I mean? Like I I've got my picks for which ones are which, and I've put the time in and I might be wrong yet. This is how you have to act as an investigator. I can't walk or, even though I speak with a lot of confidence and everything else, it's just part of my personality. Uh, I think you should have enough knowledge to be confident in what you're addressing and then be confident enough to come up and admit you're wrong when you're wrong. That's just how it is. It's not as important that you always admit it to everybody else. It's more important that you admit it to yourself, right? But at the same time, as we investigate it, try to look for the patterns. Try to use your common sense. Look back to your own personal experience, but don't rely only on that. There's another thing where people always say, well, I don't want to, tr I don't trust the government anymore. And I get it. I don't trust the big institutions. Okay. I don't trust the media. Fine. But that still doesn't mean their whole, all of those entities are wholesale 100% lying on every single thing because that's just, it wouldn't work. Right now they're lying about a lot. It seems like they're really picking it up for sure, but careful with going all the way, right? Careful with going to that extreme level. This is why I'm saying this because this was my warning in that bit that I did. What is the target of the real conspiracy? What is the real conspiracy? Put it simply, enslavement. A modern form of enslavement for the human farm. Something that's updated, 
and something that would actually be effective at using human ingenuity, consciousness, energy as a, as a resource. And how do you contain, extract, and benefit the most from that resource? And then you have to have it set up in different ways for different demographics of people who will, some people will tolerate certain things, other people won't tolerate other things, right? Depends on the cultural conditioning, the background, etc. So if we're looking at this from the big perspective of whoever or whatever's managing this whole system, if they are these psychopathic, power hungry, control freaks, and they're not benevolent towards humanity, but are simply acting that part, we would have to look at it as how would they go about achieving that enslavement on different levels, in different demographics, in different countries, etc. I use the example of the way this collectivistic experiments went down in recent history, right? You had the Bolshevik revolution in Russia that bred a certain type of this weaponized socialism. You had the same time, this fascist version in Germany, which was another brand of the same poison pill. And at the same time, you had a very soft pill approach in America under FDR that was leaked in through his administration into America to start the building blocks towards dissolving nation states and creating a one world government system run by these totalitarian types. They know that humanity yearns to be connected together and to not be so divided and to end war and all of that right so they that's why they're building this new world empire under the guise of saving the planet and stopping war and all the writings that you read of some of these original guys some of them might have been very well intentioned they are and if you go to the un and the world economic forum and the club of rome and you listen to all the all the woke types and all the far extreme types in the political world, they're all describing a utopian vision, right? So there's your indication that, okay, I would love a utopian vision. That would be great. Is it really though? Because I've studied way too much cult activity and listened to their dogma and it sounds identical and it never goes well. It ends up in the enslavement of the minds of the adherents to the cult and ends up in ritual suicide, murder and pedophilia and human trafficking and all kinds of dark shit that we could get into. So you can start your basis of looking at the world they're trying to build with this slave system as basically like they're trying to indoctrinate people into different cults that seem like they're fighting against each other, but actually all have the same liniments, the same skeletal structure, the same formula, the same pattern, the same template woven into it, just different flavors of Gatorade, right? So to, to bring it back here, in our current time, the target, it's written down, it's admitted, it's on the placards of these protesters, is to destroy Western civilization. That's the agenda. It's been the agenda for 200 years. Written down, documented, bragged about, okay, by these aristocratic elites, intelligence elites, government elites, etc. Okay. Now, does that mean you can accuse every single part or every single person in every organization or every Freemasonic secret society or every uh, Shriner group or every Knight of Malta or every doctor, nurse, pharma rep, rep, rep intelli- you know, FBI, CIA agent? No. You can look at it in a much more intelligent way, which is that you're dealing with a core group that are using those agencies and those institutions as a vehicle towards the ultimate agenda, which is to destroy the West and replace it with something else. I think it's just obvious that that's what's happening. Now, people go, well, what about the rest of the world? Well, the rest of the world has already been conquered. Latin America, Africa, Asia, it's all been conquered long. It's already been conquered and put into a various, uh, a, a homemade version for each demographic, the Middle East, etc. right? They all have their version of these different brands of totalitarian collectivism. That's really what they want as the template for the world, because it's a very simple equation. 
if we're not dealing with something benevolent for humanity or we're dealing with a psychotic dream of people who think they're operating on that regard, but they actually aren't because they're deceiving themselves and therefore are capable of deceiving the world. However you want to look at it, whether it's premeditated or accidental or misguided, doesn't really matter. We're still in the same discussion here. Um, they would know that they had to create different versions of the same thing for different kinds of people, that this project would take a long time. And that's why it's called the long march through the institutions. That's sort of the, they coined that from the communists, right? Even though these people at the top aren't themselves communists, they know how to recruit the communists into their agenda. They're not just fascists either. They're, they're something completely above all of that. They have their own hybrid version of what they want for the entire world moving forward. Uh, in terms of establishing their domain of control. So as we look at this, we're at the point in the game that's already been going on for hundreds of years, if not thousands, if you really want to stretch it back. But let's just say, because this is something humanity is doing to itself overall, and then we could also theorize about other levels. That's another podcast, but let's just keep it on the ground level for now. We're at the point in the game, we're at the point in the movie where the last pillar needs to fall for this new system to be put in place and freedom to be taken out and the new human 2.0 to be brought in. The new human slave on the farm. This to, the, to me is an upgrade that they need to do because human consciousness is always evolving and upgrading no matter how much mind control they try to foist upon us. It's always automatically as a function of nature itself is going to try to optimize. So they have to keep upgrading their system the way your iPhone needs to constantly get updated in order to keep up with the evolution curve of human consciousness. The West was the only place that actually allowed for free thought and free thinking and free speech and freedom in general, private property ownership, giving the means of production to the average person with supposedly a small government system that was just there to manage things like a managerial, you know, administration, not to be a totalitarian gong show that it is now. The pillars of the philosophy that came from numerous Western traditions. No, it didn't just come from religion. That was a piece of it. It came from numerous traditions, philosophers, thinkers that were on different sides of many different issues of the day, but all came in harmony to say more freedom is good. And the laws we put in place are simply there to continue to protect freedom, not to further restrict freedom. Right. Um, so it was the first system. It was the first time we got closer by establishing these values that are Western values into a system that was political, that had a day in the sun or two until it was infiltrated and corrupted. And, you know, the things that we see um, that are the dark side of the West, there's explanations for that. And we know who did it and why. I would say it's these people that I'm talking about. But the people, the, the philosophy, the thinkers themselves that bore in these ideas and tried to install them, they came, I believe, from a virtuous place of trying to help continue the upgrade that's always going on of optimizing human consciousness and evolution, which starts up in our, the way we think and the way we perceive ourselves in the world. And if the way we perceive ourselves in the world is centered around the principle of freedom and the concept that you own yourself, the government doesn't own you, you own the property that you work to earn. The government can't just come and exploit you and take that from you and give it to people who don't work and don't earn. And that we actually protect our civilization and protect our values from competing civilizations and values that would seek to destroy, dismantle and replace that. This ideology is now off. the. This is what they're attacking. And so that's why they started with. In take capturing the institutions and the media and the. Um, you know, the censorship campaigns came in and everything else, right? And then it's now turning hot on the ground where they're literally trying to destroy these different elements, different parts of the West and take down the system of values and replace it with this neo-Marxist hybrid commu-fascist 
totalitarian wokeism or whatever you want to call it. It's, 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 a, it's a mixed bag of things. It's sort of the best, of, the best remix of all the tyrannies just rolled into one, the perfected uh, version of it to try to ensnare the whole world. And the last pillar that they needed to topple was the West because it was the only thing that stood in their way. That's why they hate America. That's why they hate... That's why they've trained all these kids to start hating freedom and hating um, the very pillars of, of, of freedom in the West. So that's my argument, is that that's the, pro, that's the main conspiracy that you need to look at. Now, we can zoom out and go, oh, it's the conspiracy to enslave human consciousness and trap us into this energy and blah, blah, blah. That, I'm, that's a separate thing. I'm, I'm focusing on what can you actually validate aside getting into all this pie in the sky stuff. What's actually physically taking place right now is an assault openly now, openly it used to be behind the door, but now it's not openly to destroy American Western values and replace them with these globalist totalitarian cult like values to facilitate this dream that's been dreamt by these totalitarians for centuries now. Okay, so if we understand that, what would be one of the best ways of achieving that? Would it be through an open assault? And I know people are going to say it is pretty open right now. Yeah, right now it seems that way, but it didn't start that way, did it? It is this one little tiptoe, 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 tiptoe. Now they just kicked the door in and the Trojan horse already came in. And now it's open and all the soldiers are coming out and we're in the time where they're all hacking everybody and we're in that battle. That's where we're at. But don't forget the history of how the Trojan horse came in. Everybody celebrated it and, you know, it went along with it. Don't forget about that part. So you need to take apart in the public mind in the West. You need to take apart all of the sacred cows. You need to soil all of the great accomplishments that that system of freedom produced. You need to attack the accomplishments because even with the corruption that goes right back to the founding, just a little more freedom than other parts in the world produced so much, so many amazing inventions, accomplishments, achievements, offered humanity a vision, hope for the future. And we were still on a broken cart with a wheel that was falling off, with people shooting flaming arrows at us, going uphill, you know, getting hit from all directions. And we still achieved something that the entire world envies. The entire world envies what America and what the West has created. And that's why we're getting people coming here and being brought here. Okay, I'm, I'm not talking about people from cult, other cultures. I'm talking about they're bringing waves and waves of people in and ideas that are coming with it to say, hey, we would prefer to live here in Western countries, which give us more opportunity, more freedom, more wealth, more of the things we want. And we're escaping our broken civilizations and countries who, because like I said, this, this agenda, this campaign started in these other areas, India, China, Iraq, or, you know, everywhere, right? All over. Already destroyed them. Those are conquered areas. Now they're coming in here and saying, oh, we want what you have. We're, you're the envy of the world. We want what you have. We want to take part in it. Hey, Everybody here in the West is like, sure, come on in, join the party. We'll show you how amazing it is. And then instead of the overall consensus being thank you and wow, we better take some notes and maybe go back and improve what we're doing. What's the overall consensus? Because of the fact that from within the West is this ideology that's been installed, this poison in the pill that's to attack everything that the West has produced while living in the comfort that of the West from those productions. It's a massive contradiction. And now 
we're being lectured in our own countries from people who come from other countries, other cultures, and who have other value systems to come in and critique us and seek to install the very same ideologies in the West that destroyed their own nations. You can't make this up. Now, it's not necessarily all those individual people's fault necessarily because they've been hoodwinked too, right? And there's envy and of course, what does that do to people, right? Um, but I'm saying this is, this is part, this is the agenda, this is the conspiracy, is to not allow those principles of freedom to travel the world because it would totally throw aside the real goals. So they need to bring people in that have already been brainwashed to the West, who is now made of a population who are brainwashed in different ways. Watch that collision take place. And then out of the ashes of that war that's going to happen, right? As, the, as our civilization tears itself apart from having too many chiefs and too many directions and too many competing ideas and the division and the just the discord and they're inflaming the race war and they're inflaming the gender war and they're inflaming every kind of division possible because it's out of the chaos that they have opportunity to take the thrones of power. So there's your, there's your conspiracy. So when I see wholesale condemnation of every aspect of Western civilization being brought into these new conspiracy theories to besmirch and downgrade and knock down the many legitimate achievements that the West has made in its project and in this experiment of freedom. I wonder, were those events and those accomplishments and those achievements actually conspiratorial or were they legitimate? Did some of them maybe have aspects to them that were not, they didn't tell us the whole story but that the actual achievements themselves were made and that in the public mind here in the West, as a part of this multi-pronged assault, they're trying to get us to hate ourselves, to forget the, the achievements of the past so that there's no really anything left to fight for. And then it gives these neo-Marxist types that are running around everywhere with their scripts, bringing back the same arguments they brought to all the other nations they've destroyed from the inside out in this exact manner, they're running around going, yeah, see, you guys are all a bunch of lying, slave-owning, hateful, homophobe, blah, blah, blah. They want you to have self-hate. They And then if you go, you know what? You're right, man. We are shit. We are a bunch of colonial, slave-owning, and we're, we're the only ones ever. Uh, and, and we never achieved anything. It was all, it was all hoaxes. It was all fake. Never did. We never achieved anything. Now you have nothing left to fight for, and you're going to be out there, as people are, supporting the very enemy that's been led into your gates in the political world, in the social world, in the universities. We've been infiltrated and captured top to bottom, ideologically. So now the instinct is to throw everything out. And that's why everything is a conspiracy now. That's the new thing in town. That's the new theory. Everything's, a conspiracy. Everything's fake. Everything was faked. They lied about everything. And now you can go, yeah, they did. Well, fuck them. And then you end up doing what? not resisting the very conspirators that you claim to be fighting. You actually help them finish the job. That's what these psyops are about. And that was my argument to just watch for that. And you're going to go and pick and choose what you think falls in which category. When I'm talking about fake conspiracy theories versus real conspiracy facts, I will let you, I'm not going to be here to get into specifics because it's going to trigger everybody. I'm just giving you this. I'm trying to give you the, the pattern recognition. I'm trying to give you a way of seeing it that at least now you can go, man, maybe I fell down a few too many rabbit holes and ended up in the palm of the hands of the very dark lords that are trying to usurp my nations right now. And the best way to do that is by what? Go back to Yuri Bezmenov, all the people that like to talk about that. Did you actually think about what he said? Yuri Bezmenov being that KGB defector that was brought over to America by Jared Griffin and interviewed about what the agenda was of the communists in Russia 
who are just a faction, a wing of the greater high table that I'm talking about, who run these experiments to determine which is the most successful version and how it should be applied to these differing demographics. What did Yuri Bezmenov say were the four stages of how to destroy a civilization and take over a country from within? Destabilization, demoralization, introduce a variety of crises, and then you usher in a new normal. You normalize the self-hate. And people will put the chains right around their own necks and attach them to the big leash that's being pulled by these very forces that have infiltrated our countries. So then they go, oh, we want Canadians to hate Canada and think that it was all just a big scam and it never even happened. And it's, you guys were just a bunch of abusers of the natives and all that, even though it was the crown and gown that were the abusers of the First Nations people. It wasn't the average Canadian person, all right? And same with America. Oh, you guys are just a bunch of slave owners. Meanwhile, we don't get to talk about the, the, the Islamic slave trade or the black slave or any of these other things. And on and on we go. And because no human group is innocent of these crimes against humanity. All of us have engaged in the most horrific treatment of each other throughout history. And so by, conf by confounding all of these things, you keep division. You introduce demoralization to call America and the West. Oh, you're a bunch of colonial evil, whatever, which is that's just the rhetoric of people who have envy because of the successes of the West. And usually it, it's coming from people who are enjoying the bounties of the West while they're critiquing it. And you don't see them hightailing it back to Venezuela or Cuba or Palestine or anywhere else. They're not going back there. They're coming here to lecture us and contribute in it. But the only reason that's effective at all is because the native population, the people living here in Western countries are going, yeah, you're right. Let me kiss your boots. And you know where I learned a lot of this from? From legitimate immigrants from other nations who survived the exact same takeover that Yuri Bezmenov described in their countries. So please don't take it as I'm this person that doesn't agree that we should have some kind of it. No, no, no. In fact, I think in places like Canada, thank God we have people who've immigrated here from Venezuela, Poland, Romania, Russia, China, who fled communism and totalitarianism in those countries. People who lived in Germany during the wars, during the, you know, the fall of the Berlin Wall, whatever, who've lived it. In Africa, who've seen what happened there you know, who have become, who, want, who, who actually do value the, the pillars of the West and the concepts, even if we're in a, a tattered, corrupted form of it. The difference is, is something that Michael Tessarian pointed out in, uh, I put this in chapter nine of Cult of the Medics, where he was saying that there's a difference between the agents of this conspiracy and the real people who care about saving their nation and their civilization. The people who care aren't trying to blow the whole thing up and say everything's evil and fake and wrong and let's just destroy it and rebuild a new utopia. That's the argument of the totalitarians who are blinded by the light. Their argument is, your argument should be, I want to cut out the rot that's brought the decay to my homelands, to my civilization, to my nations, right? This is how you address things on a personal basis. You don't cut everything out of yourself. You, you just get rid of that which is holding you back, the diseased part. And then you replace it and you let the whole thing grow back and become new again and become healthy again. So I just think that we, we have to look at the bigger picture here, always. That they are trying to put in your mind doubt in yourself. They are trying to install self-hatred. They're trying to destabilize you economically. And also all these factors aren't just to the economy and to the politics and all media. It's to your psyche. This is mind control. This is how you take this is fifth generation psychological warfare. We keep hearing about this, right? This is creating mass hysteria and mass formation psychosis. That's the weapons of the modern war. We say it all the time and then people go fly off into la la land right after. It's amazing. Keep that on your bulletin board.
destabilization, demoralization. That's what the demoralization process is. Everything you've produced is just evil and fake and it didn't even happen anyways. Yeah, that's what your enemies would tell you, not your friends. And even if there have been blights and mistakes and maybe real conspiracies and real fake shit, they're never going to give you the truth on that with the, the full story that talk about the actual successes. So no, not everything is a conspiracy. Not everybody's in on it. Not everything was fake. Not everything you've, we've done in the West is evil. I'm not saying it excuses the things that are, but ye without sin cast the first stone. How about that? Who are we being lectured by? People and institutions and paid shills, real shills that are put into your universities and all over your social media and in your education system to raise your children with guilt-based programming? You're going to listen to them? Or are you going to listen to the great historians and thinkers and writers and the real people out there telling you the truth that are there to say, hey, we'll admit where we've done wrong, but the gift that the principles of freedom have brought this isn't about race or anything else like that. This is just about ideas, good ideas versus bad ideas. The, the good ideas we've had have produced amazing inventions and opportunities and wealth and freedom. And we're going to critique the wrongs. But for people to come up over with a program that's like this holier than thou coming in from totalitarian societies to critique us? Why would you allow this to be put into your child's head, guilt, and never tell them the victories, never tell them the good things, only the bad things, which are usually hyper-exaggerated, and many of them are lies. Many of them are out of context. Many are just fabrications for the purpose of this onward assault. So if the prize is enslavement program, updated enslavement program of the human farm. And in order to do that, we have to remove any obstacle in the way of achieving that. The obstacles would be any philosophy or ideology that espouse any semblance of freedom whatsoever, an individual thinking, or even the fact that an individual even exists, or that you have free will, etc. We need to erase that. Those are the pillars. Those are the, the underpinnings, the premise of Western civilization and why it became the envy of the world. You have to attack that. You have to demoralize the population of America and the West. So are some of these conspiracy theories part of demoralization by saying everything we've ever done is fake and not true and it was all just a conspiracy? It's just an idea to consider. It's just an idea. It's just me thinking out loud. I happen to believe it, but it doesn't matter what I believe. I'm just here to caution you and say, let's think twice about some of the conclusions that we're jumping through, through as we go down our algorithmically primed news feeds, reading mostly intelligence agency propaganda, instead of actually doing real research for yourself. That's all I'm trying to say. I'll let you sort out on your own because I believe you to have the capacity to do it once I've hopefully framed this correctly to figure out which is which. What's the true? What's the false? That's on you. It's not on me. And just write those four stages that Yuri Bezmenov put down, put them up on a post-it note and just read it. And then look at whatever you're looking at and ask yourself, is this really true? Or is this part of a psychological operation to capture my mind and recruit me into something that is ultimately designed to destroy the very country, concepts, belief systems, whatever that I'm trying to save? That would be weapons in this war against this tyranny, against this totalitarianism. What does a bully do? They demoralize you. They tell you all your achievements weren't achievements. These, what are these envies, envious 
gossipers do. They talk you down. They talk you down because they have no way of elevating themselves. So they need to bring everybody down to their own level. It's the crab in the bucket thing. You want to leave the cult? We got to tear that person down that wants to leave the cult. When I see that kind of blueprint, I'm on to you. I can smell you a mile away. That alone doesn't even, I don't even care what your package is you want to try to take me through. I know the liniments of evasion of reality when I see it. And self-hate, little man syndrome, beta activity, it's oozing right now everywhere. I can smell it. So watch how people operate when they're trying to break these things down to you. Are they coming at it with an open mind or are they just saying that to give it lip service and really they're trying to corral your mind into their cult? And are they trying to, is this ultimately something that's going to contribute to saving freedom and saving the West and saving everything we've built here and making it better and improving upon past mistakes? Is that the vibe or is the vibe envy, demoralization, talking down to you, everything you ever did was wrong and fake and evil? That's how manipulators talk to you. So that's why I'm saying guard your mind against the extremism that's running rampant everywhere right now in the so-called alternative research community. Stay true to yourself. Stay true to your own mind. Keep your mind open, but not so much that your brain falls out. And once you see the big picture that of who's doing it, why they're doing it, what they're trying to do, it becomes infinitely easier to try to sort out the true from the false. So, Oscar Wilde, man, the truth is rarely pure and never simple. And people trying to sell you simple truths and simple explanations and wide sweeping generalizations where they're putting everybody and everything into these g big hunk baskets. R watch out for that. Watch out for that. It t is a lot of nuance to look through. There's a lot of tangled webs to look through. There's a lot. It's going to take you some stretching and strengthening of your mind in order to even look at this and try to determine, let alone determine what the final thing is. So just watch out for that. I see it. I feel it. And don't ever be afraid to think out loud. Don't ever be afraid to entertain something for a while and then walk away from it. Look at it deeply. Give it the time that it's due. The truth is an energy of its own. It's coming out anyways. But in the process of it coming out, would you not also think that the dark side of the force wouldn't try to inject a lot of other bullshit theories into the mix to try to spoil the pot and keep you distracted and keep you running, chasing your tail? Of course they would. It's established that that's the modus operandi of how criminal little man syndrome people operate. So I think that's all I got to say. Um, you can go and check out that little bit that I put up on my podcasts. Uh, just a little heads up as well. There's going to be some changes coming your way to Truth Warrior. I think they're very exciting. I'm going to be trying to up my game and really reinvesting myself into this work. So stay tuned for that. And I hope I've at least given you something to think about today. So stay curious, my friends. The truth is going to win and stay humble in your search. Cheers, everybody.